Welcome. Uh, this is the, the third installment of our Bible study 101. Um, in the past, we've done we've done um, you know what what is the Bible and and we did um, how did the Bible progress or how do they try to perfect the Bible. Um, so today, what we're going to do is we're going to break it down into its divisions. We already didn't know the Old Testament, the New Testament, and we gave a handout before that talked about. Um, about the different divisions. This is the Old Testament divisions. You got the the law, book of the law, the Torah, or the Pentateuch. They, they, those are all the same thing. Those are the first five books of the Bible. Um, the historical books. Those are all the history of the um, the Jewish history, all the way up to right before um, Christ was born. Um, the poetic books. Poetic books are are, are like um, poems. And uh, of course, the Psalms, which are just songs, um, they used to sing them. And uh, Ecclesiastes and Proverbs, so those are wisdom. They 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 are supposed to impart wisdom on us. And uh, the Song of Songs or the Song of Solomon, which is a romantic letter, which is supposed to be a metaphor for God's love for His people. So. Um, then of course you got the prophetic books, all the prophets. You got the, the minor prophets and then the big prophets. Now the difference between the minor prophets and the big prophets, it's like, oh, these are the big prophets. These are the guys that are really important. No, the, the difference is how, how long the writings are. So if they, the, the writings were really long, like Isaiah, which actually they break it down into three sections, first Isaiah, second Isaiah, third Isaiah, because if you if you do the do the uh, study, you'll find out that Isaiah wrote well, almost 900 years. So I'm pretty sure that it wasn't one person named Isaiah that wrote all the book of Isaiah. But anyway, so those are those are what uh, the Old Testament looks like. Those are the divisions that are broken down. And then the New Testament, of course, you got the Gospels, stories about Jesus, uh, the uh, bio biographical, which is the Acts, that's the beginning of the church. And then you have the letters of uh, the um, to the, to the churches. Those are letters from the church leaders, mostly Paul. Um, some of the other ones like uh, Peter and John and Jude, those are all um, letters to specific churches um, talking about specific uh, issues they're having in their churches and um, how to fix them. And then, of course, Revelation is, um, a, is another prophecy, but it's uh, the prophecy of Re Revelation about the church itself and, and where it's heading. Um, we'll talk a little bit about the revelation and the prophet, prophecy here a little bit later. So today we're going to start, we're going to do the, the Pentateuch. The Pentateuch, Pena means five. So the first five books of the Bible, they also refer to it as the law or uh, the Torah is what the, um, a lot of the Jewish people will call it. Um, consists of Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Okay, start with Genesis, and what I want to do today is simply go over some of the major stories that are there, okay, stories that you've heard of before, and it just, just so you get an idea of where in the Bible there you can find them, okay, so we'll start with Genesis, and of course the first thing is the creation story, um, God said, let there be light, there was light, God made the land, God made the, the animals, God made human beings. So that's the creation story. Adam and Eve, right after that, chapter 3, um, Adam and Eve do their thing and uh, sin or disobey God. God kicks them out of the, the uh, Garden of Eden and they go and they have children. Um, so that's the beginning. And then... Uh, the story of their children up until the flood, and the flood is in chapter 11 of Genesis, um, talks about um, a worldwide flood, of course, Noah's Ark is there, and all the animals are saved. Um, cold, Peter's cold, he's kidding. When I got in here, I was sweating, so I turned on the air conditioner, so. Hope you guys at home aren't, aren't too cold. Um, anyway. So uh, the, ta uh, the, the flood story, then Noah, and then the, the humanity begins again, um, all the way up to the Tower of Babel, which uh, 
I did <laughs> through my luck and my <laughs> my military career, I've actually been to Babylon and seen where they say the Tower of Babel was supposed to take place. So. But anyway, Tower of Babel, God confuses everything up to this point. Everybody spoke the same language. Now everybody speaks a different language. Um, and then we go up through till we get to Abraham. And like I said uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, Abraham is the father of three religions. The Jewish religion, the Christian religion, because Christianity comes right off of, and also uh, the Islamic religion in the fact that um, the, 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 the Islamic people do their lineage back to what they call Ishmael. And Ishmael is the uh, son of Abraham's slave girl. So you have you have the, the Isaac and you have Ishmael. So you have the two, the, the, the Jews and the Muslims. Yeah. No, it's just interesting to point out that that's where the conflict between Judaism and Islam began. Yeah. Well, not then, but later. It's where it's traced well, back. Well, yeah, to. that's what that, that's what that's where. Muhammad. You know, yeah, that's where Muhammad says this is where they went wrong, and we are the sons of Ishmael, which we are the rightful heirs. Whereas the Jewish people say no, we're Abraham's rightful heirs on the different son. So um, they they use that to, to make a division. But how do they what, worship the same God? And they they do they 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 worship they profess to worship the same God. Uh, so that's the Abraham story. Uh, we get to Jacob, which is uh, Abraham's great grandson, um, and he wrestles with uh, an angel. He has a, a wrestling match with an angel, and uh, the angel dislocates his, the, the Jacob's hip. But they wrestle all night long. So a lot of people say that's a metaphor for he prayed all night long and he wrestled with. God all night long, and in the end, his name is Israel, which means one who uh, overcome God or wrestled with God. So, um, and that's the beginning of the nation of Israel. Uh, Jacob ends up having twelve sons. They become the twelve uh, right. tribes of Israel. Uh, one of his youngest son is uh, one of his youngest at the time was Joseph, and he loved Joseph so much that he um, he gave him a coat of many colors. Um, Peter's got a coat of many colors on right now. <laughs> um, so uh, the coat of many colors, his brothers didn't like that. So one day when he goes out to meet them, of course they're shepherds, they're, they're herdsmen, and his brothers capture him, throw him in a well, and when a caravan comes along, they sell him to the caravan. And the caravan takes him down to Egypt. And the story of Joseph and Potiphar, um, where uh, Joseph um, becomes great in the kingdom of Israel, uh, uh, Egypt. So he's in Egypt. Uh, he has this, uh, he becomes a slave to Potiphar. Potiphar's wife accuses him of trying to molest her, which isn't true. And he gets thrown into jail while he's in jail. Translate people's dreams, and one of the guards tells the Pharaoh, and he comes and he, trans or he uh, translates Pharaoh's dream about how there will be a famine, and and so they they store up wheat for the famine, and he's a hero, and he raises in power until he's the second in charge of all of Egypt, and then the story goes on that. The people, uh, his people, his brothers, come down to Egypt because of the famine, and he wants them all to come down. So he gets them, gets all his family, go back, get their father, get their his younger brother now, which is um, mm -hmm. hmm? Reuben. No, Benjamin. Oh, Benjamin. Uh, has him come, and so they all come down to Egypt, and then he reveals that hey. I'm an adult now, but I'm your brother that you <laughs> sold off. And it was God's plan to rescue us during this famine. And so 
they move into Egypt and they're they're great, everything's wonderful until um, dun, dun, dun. Dun, 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 cliffhanger because we have to go to oh the next book. <laughs> so the book of Exodus starts out with um, there became a pharaoh that knew not Joseph. Basically, 400 years they've lived in Egypt now. Um, and they prospered, and they grew in the size and number. They had their own little Jewish community <laughs> off to the side. You know, if you were if you were in uh, San Francisco, it would be Asian Town or uh, Chinatown. <laughs> so you're in Egypt, and you have uh, a Jewish town. So, <laughs> um, so you so they they go down there. They 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 prosper, and then some pharaoh comes along that doesn't remember Joseph and all that he did for the Egypt people, the Egyptian people. And now we have um, some problems. And just like any, any place else, is it, isn't this true in the world today? If you migrate to some place new, you get all the crappy jobs. Okay? You basically, and that's what happened, the Jews became Farmers, okay, they're farmers, they're, they're herdsmen, but they also started getting sold into slavery. And so a lot of them are slaves now. So they're in Egypt, they're lowest class citizens, they're slaves, and now, even worse, they're treated like dirt. And they're forced into slavery. So that's the beginning of the Exodus. And then we hear about they're, they're getting too much numbers, kind of like they, I think they do in China, where you can only have two kids and then that's it. If you have more, you have to be aborted. And, you know. So uh, all the male children were to be killed at birth. And then we have the story of Moses, or uh, of Moses, yeah. Moses was born, kids were killing, putting in the reef floated him down the Nile, and one of the officials, midwives, picks him up, and he's raised in Pharaoh's own household. So he grew in power. And then when he's old enough, and he learns that who he is, he's really one of these slaves, these Hebrew slaves, even though he, all his life, he was raised an Egyptian in the palace. So now he sees this, and he wants to become favorable to his to his Hebrew brothers and sisters, his Jewish brothers and sisters. And so he stops someone from being a slave of Hebrew. And in doing so, he ends up killing the Egyptians. So now he's like, that's something you don't do. Especially if you're a, a Hebrew or a Jew and you killed an Egyptian, oh, you're gone. So he runs away and he hides in the desert. That's the story of the burning bush, where God brings him back and tells him, "You're going to set my people free." So those are the those are the things. He gets a wife. Uh, he uh, Midian, which uh, his father-in-law Jethro is called the priest of Midian. Um, his wife, and then he encounters the burning bush, and he returns to Egypt to set them free. Um, then we have in Egypt, or the, in Exodus, we have the, the story of the plagues, where God puts plagues on the Egyptians, trying to make Pharaoh let them go. Um, finally does. They go across the Red Sea, parting the water. Y'all remember this, the, the Ten Commandments with Charleston Heston holding up his stick, and the waters are parting. And so, <laughs> wonder what that really looked like. But anyway. So you have the, the wandering in the desert. They start wandering in the desert. Um, we have a story of manna. You remember know what the manna is? Food it's from heaven. From heaven. It's like it comes down from heaven like every rain. night. Huh? Like rain. Yeah, well, like at night, and, and you just go pick it. It's like manna? Manna. What? I think it's pronounced manna, wasn't it? Manna. Yeah, that's what he's saying. Yeah. You're right. What is it? It's bread of life. It's bread. What is it? Bread of life. Man. What is it? That's manna actually means what is it? Oh, it means what? Oh, what is it? Oh. <laughs> and I'm 
funny. Anyway, so never knew that. They, they they come out and they they pick the manna, and they they they're told not to um, save it. You don't put it in jars and save it because after at night it molds and you can't save it. So every day they got to go and they got to pick up their manna. Like mushrooms. And, yeah, and eat, eat their manna for the day, and then at night. You're done with it. You'll get a new supply next morning. Except for on Friday. The Sabbath. You're not supposed to work on the Sabbath. So on the Sabbath, or on Friday before the Sabbath, which is their Sabbath is Saturday, you get a double portion, and it stays overnight. Wow, how does that work? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Only on Friday. Only the Friday version actually makes it through the night. So anyway, so that's the manna. And then... Uh, uh, the giving of the Ten Commandments <coughs> starts chapter 19. Um, Ten Commandments, God, or, or Moses goes up on the mountain, Mount Sinai, he gets the, 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 the words from God, and he comes down and he gives them to the people. And uh, in chapter 20, it is a, good, is a good place to find the actual Ten Commandments. If you ever go, where's the Ten Commandments? Uh, chapter 20. In Exodus, it gives you list. You know, it doesn't go commandment one, but but it, but it lists them. Uh, don't do this. Don't do that. What is it? What's the first one? You know, the first one. Love your God. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, 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 all your mind, and all your soul. Okay. So, um, but while he's up there, they make a golden calf, and they start worshiping the golden calf, which is an Egyptian god that they bring with them. Because they, they were in Egypt so long, they, they developed some of their understandings of gods. And so this is the Egyptian god that they make this little golden calf out of. And they start worshiping it because Moses went away and we're out here in the desert and we don't know who would. So that is the worship of the golden calf. Moses comes back. He gives them the law. He breaks the tablets. He's really PO'd, and uh, uh, so, and then in the later part of Exodus is the story of building the tabernacle. You, you've seen churches called the tabernacle? I always think this is so funny. Because the word tabernacle means tent. So you got a big building, and it's a tent. <laughs> it's the tabernacle means tent. And that's the difference between the tabernacle, which is supposed to be where God comes and dwells. It's just the same representation as the temple, which is the temple is a big brick building, but the tabernacle is made out of a tent because they have to pack it up and move it because they're wandering right now. But this is where God is supposed to come and where the priests are supposed to pray to God and all this stuff. So, um, But it tells them how to build it temporary house, and of course later they'll build uh, the temple in Jerusalem. So, that's basically what's in Exodus. We get to Leviticus. And Leviticus, of course, coming from the word Levi, which is the priestly um, tribe. So, Leviticus um, is the giving of the law. Basically, this is everything that's in the law. Um, the way the Israelites were to live in community. Okay, today we, we go to Leviticus. People want to turn to Leviticus and point to the laws that are in Leviticus and say, see this? You're not supposed to do that. And they, this is a sin or that is a sin because they pointed to Leviticus and they say, this is for everyone. But it's not. This is the law of the people that are wandering in the desert. So you can understand, don't eat pig, don't eat pig, not on eat pork and Why? Chicken nose. Thank you. You know, uh, don't, uh, there's certain kinds of fish you're not supposed to eat. Any fish without scales. You're not supposed to eat crawfish. Cover your head. Yeah. Or it says, yeah, exactly. Iodine. And so, so all of these are laws of, of, it makes sense to people that are, and they don't necessarily, 
a tribute to us today. And I think people have a problem of understanding that. Um, we'll get into that when we talk about um, each of the, when we get into studying the law itself. Um, but anyway, this is basically the laws of the community. Not only the laws, uh, but um, how the priests were supposed to do the sacrifices and when the sacrifices were supposed to take place and all of this kind of things. So if you want to be technical and try to understand this, it's, it's basically the beginning of what Moses gave them as, as a code of law. So how the people as a community would live together. Okay. So now we get into the book of Numbers. Numbers is a census. It's basically, it starts out, it, it, they're, they're so large and they're so big. We got this temple now and we got all these different tribes and they're going to tell them this tribe is made up of this many people, this tribe is made up of this many people, this tribe is made up of this many people. And it, um, Man, what can I say? You don't know the census. It's very boring. It's like reading a census. Um, it's, it's very tedious and, and, and boring part of but there are some, some decent stories in it. Um, it take, but it explains to how they, you know, the law, Leviticus, is how they were going to live in community. This shows them living in community. Numbers. These are the people. These are how they were. This is where they stayed. Each one of the tribes, they built the, they built the tabernacle, and each one of the tribes were supposed to camp on a certain side of the tabernacle. And so when you come, we've been traveling for a day, and we, okay, we're going to set up camp. Everybody knows where to go. Here's the, te here's the tabernacle. Here's the, you know, the temple. Here's our church. And now we set up around the church. It's like a grid. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So it was organized, and that, that's basically what it talks about here. Um, it also talks about the sons of Aaron. Um, Aaron is one of, I guess, is one of the, the sons of Levi, which was also um, one of Jacob's sons, one of the original um, 12 tribes or 12 sons of Jacob, Israel. Um, so so it, it talks about how they're, they, that's where you're supposed to get all your priests. It's from the sons of Aaron, the Levites. Um, this, uh, this gave them a way of living. Okay, so, so the priests weren't supposed to have animals. They weren't supposed to have possessions. They, their job was to be the mediator between God and the people. And so they were um, expected to, to be given things. So this, they, they got the taxes, basically. So when you come to sacrifice, okay, you sacrifice the goat, here's the goat, sacrifice the goat, the, the priest would cut up the goat and he would take some of it for himself, and the rest is for you to sacrifice, and of course he'd have to eat the, the, the portions that he sacrificed and keep for himself. So, anyway, so it's, it's a way for them to make a living without being, you know, um, without having to um, become a farmer himself, um, and, and do all this stuff, because then you'd be doing double duty. You'd have to be a herdsman and taking care of the people. There are some interesting stories near, near the end. After chapter 19, there's some really good stories in the book of, if you get through all of the tedious <laughs> uh, census material, then you get to, to the, the story of Balaam. I love the story of Balaam. This Balaam starts out, is Balaam a good guy? It sounds like he's a good guy, and then he turns into a bad guy, and then you go later on in, the, in one of the later books, Book of Kings, I think it is, he, he goes back and he's, well, maybe he's not a bad guy. So he's one of those guys that he tells the truth, and there it is. It, he's, 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 a, he's a prophet, and uh, when he's a prophet, you might remember him. He's, he's the one that, that the donkey spoke to. Oh? Yes. The, uh, the, the, the angel blocks his way, and the donkey stops and won't go by and. He's get, he gets off and he starts beating on his donkey and his donkey finally stops and he basically says, um, why are you beating? <laughs> Can't you see the angel right there with the big flaming sword in his hand? 
I ain't going past no angel. And he sees the angel and, and he goes and he uh, does his prophecy thing where God wants us to go. So that's the story of Balaam. Uh, good story. It's uh, I think it starts in, in chapter uh, 19 of Numbers. If you want to read that, it's pretty cool. And then he goes and he um, he, he actually tur turns on the Israelites after he prophesies for them. And then he turns on them. He tells the, the bad guys who are trying to kill the Israelites how to, to, to do, how to kill them. Anyway, so uh, that's why he's a good guy. He's a bad guy. Anyway, um, later on in the book of Numbers, uh, it talks about the festival, each of the festivals. The festival of tents, the festival of, of well, they didn't have the festival of lights at that time, but uh, Yom Kippur and all the, the time when they're supposed to do their festivals or their holidays. So that's in the latter chapter. So if you ever want to know why right. Jews are cel Jewish people are celebrating what, what holiday, go to the end of, of Numbers and you can find these guys. Then we get to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy, Dudo means do. Deuteronomy is the second giving of the law. Second giving of the law. It's, it's kind of a re, uh, reiteration of what they're trying to drive home. And the reason why that is is because some people say that this the book of Deuteronomy wasn't really written until after the Jews get you know go to Israel, they become the nation of Israel, and then the Babylonians come and they take them away. The Syrians come and they take them away. And so they finally get to come back to Israel, and that's when they say that this was during this period, is when this book was written, because everything became corrupt. Um, and, and it kind of it kind of agrees with that because in Second Kings, Second uh, Kings twenty two, uh, it talks about Josiah being the king, and the high priest what was his name, Hilka, Hilkiah, um, finds a um, books under the temple ruins because the, the Assyrians came in, the Babylonians came in, they wiped out the temple, they knocked it down, and now they're going to rebuild, and they find the book of the law, and this is what they find in the book of Deuteronomy. Yes? I think it's important, too, to mention about Deuteronomy is that after the dispersa, a lot of Jews weren't practicing yes. Judaism, so they had forgotten the law. Okay. So I think that was also part of the reason why yeah. Deuteronomy was written to emphasize, again, a point of political... And, and, that's, and that's what it says, too. It says the king became... Uh, uh, in, in Second Kings, the kings became corrupt. This is later on in the, in the history of Israel. The kings became corrupt, and the people didn't know God because they were captives in uh, Babylon and Assyria, and now they're coming back. And they learned all that culture, and they come back, and they need to be re-educated on what it means to be a Jew and what it means to be um, a follower. Again, here, here, this is a good one. In chapter 5 through uh, 5, 6 through 21, guess what? It's important. So, the second giving of the Ten Commandments. So, that's the second place you'll find the Ten Commandments. That pretty much does the first five books of the Bible, the main stories that are there. I know I drug some of those stories out. Of this. Do you have any questions about them? Yes. Can you talk about how. The contributed author and why that may not be true. Oh, okay. So, so what she's saying is, tradition says that Moses wrote the, all those books, and as you can see, um, if Deuteronomy was found in the temple, how did you well, know? You could say that he did, and it was there. But there's there's a lot of things that are there that tell you that Moses didn't write all five of these books. Um, so. Um, getting into the, the, the second part where we get to Joshua, Judges, and well, Joshua takes over for Moses when they come into the, the promised land. And what happens is um, they say, oh, well, where Moses wasn't able to finish because he's dead, um, Joshua finishes it. But still, my, my, favorite, my favorite quote is, is, okay, think about this. If Moses wrote 
the whole Bible, the, those, those five books. In those five books, I can't remember where it is right offhand, but there's a, there's a scripture that says Moses is the most humble person that we know. How can you write about yourself and say, I am the most humble person there ever was? And be humble. <laughs> yeah, and be humble. So I always, I always thought by that one funny. But, uh. Well, there's also a lot that talks about that Moses was not um, an orator. He didn't enjoy yeah, telling the stories. That's it. Yeah, that's he in was, Exodus. He, he talks about he doesn't like to, to he's not a good speaker. So a lot of the stories in Genesis were handed down through storytelling before there was a mechanism to record. Yeah. Um, so I think that's too. He would not have been the storyteller that you needed to be to tell those stories. Anyway, so you know, tradition has it that Moses wrote them. Scholars say that it is probably put together by several different like oral traditions. You have an oral tradition of the priests. You have an oral tradition, tradition of the, the, the Levites. And you have the oral position of those that believed in, you know, the God Jehovah. And you see that in the language. So you can look at them and see if the language is a little bit different. So it wasn't written by one person, just like some of the New, the New Testament writings that are attributed to Paul probably aren't really written by Paul. That's it. That's all I have for you today. Um, quick note, um, next week we're not going to meet because it's the day after Pride. So um, we're going to have to recuperate for that. <laughs> all right. Thanks, for everybody. Thanks for showing up.